Hello, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please subscribe to the channel so that it can grow and I can make more videos. Thank you to all the subscribers so far. Uh, let's continue with the tutorial. So here we have everything we need in view. Now it's time to make some tables so we can actually store some actual information in here and see how it work. So I have uh, created this page that allows me to remember what I need to do. So these are the tables we need. Of course, we need a users table so we can have some users in here. We need a products table, etc., etc. Now, the way things are going to work is this is going to use SQLite in the end, but um, you may want to use MySQL. So we're going to start with MySQL and then once we migrate it to PHP, uh, PHP Desktop, we'll use SQLite. So the, uh, let me explain a little bit why you would use either. So if you want to use uh, SQLite, what, um, what situation do you need to use SQLite? Now, SQLite is just like MySQL. The only difference is that this is a single user database. So this means that once one person is accessing the database, it cannot be accessed by somebody else. So only one connection allowed at a time. So this is why SQLite is a good database to use on a single application. So let's say you, um, the, the user or the client you have has one shop. So it's just one shop. There's going to have, there's going to be one machine there that they're using for scanning uh, barcodes and saving information. Then SQLite is the best bet for you. So you can use this for single machines, right? And, uh, single machine store, for example. So for as long as there's going to be one user at a time, SQLite is good. Now you can also use SQLite to store information locally. So let's say somebody has a machine, uh, there may be multiple machines on your, in your store, but you want them to store locally that information. And then later on, they can transmit it to a central place, right? So let's say you have a manager's office where at the end of the day, you want each user to send their information over to the manager's side. Then you can use SQLite for each machine and then use MySQL on the manager's machine. So the reason you might want to do this is because sometimes if you're using uh, MySQL, for example, because MySQL is multi-user. So since it's multi-user, it needs to be connected to a, through a network of some kind because there are several computers connected to the same database. Now, if it so happens that the network is slow while you're attending to customers, then you're going to have problems with each machine because they all freeze up at the same time and um, uh, uh, clients might complain. But because usually in a store you have a local network, so the chances of it being slow or lagging is very low. So you can still use MySQL just fine. It's only an issue sometimes when you're using the network over the internet and then the internet becomes slow or is non-existent then in that place you have a problem. That's where you can have a backup of MySQLite. So this one works on a single machine. This one works on a, as a central database for multiple machines. So each machine doesn't have a database of its own. It just sends the information over the network or the internet. So what we will do is we'll start with this one and then we're going to have to put it in an SQLite database later. That way you can see how to use both. Now, if you want to stick with MySQL, just ignore the last part where we shift it to SQLite. All right, so with this information, uh, let's begin creating some tables. So I will close this for now. Let's start with the users table. Uh, let me go to here. So we go to phpMyAdmin. So you type localhost slash phpMyAdmin as one word and you are going to get to this for as long as you installed XAMPP uh, correctly. Okay, so once we get here, we click on new to create a new database. 
So here I want to create a point of sale database. So you can use the company name. It doesn't really matter. Just don't use spaces, use underscores. So I'm going to call it point of sale underscore DB like this. So let's create that database. Very cool. Once we create a database, we can create a new table. So here I want the users table to store users uh, information. Now we can add number of columns, doesn't really matter. We can increase it to any number. Um, if we leave some of those empty, they just will disappear. So it's okay, we can put a large number there, that's fine. So for users, what I want is to have a username and email for them to be identified as special. And this is their username. That way two people can have the same username but different emails. A password and a role. So we need to know what one person is doing as opposed to the other. One can be an admin, the other one a cashier, and the other one a supervisor. The date when this user was signed up. And uh, you may want to add images to those users. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six items. So I'll copy this uh, username and put it there. Actually, let me put it on the second one. We do need a primary key, which is the ID. Otherwise, we will not be able to, um, to find what we are looking for without a primary key. So once we have an ID, we can use int uh, because this is we're not expecting millions of users on this thing. So if we were, we'd put big int, but int will do just fine. So once you have that int, make sure you select auto increment so that the number can change on its own. Make sure you select that it's a primary key as well. So this username here, let's put variable character as the type and we'll put, uh, I don't know, 30 characters as the limit to your username. Let's put email and let's put password as well. Let's put a date and let's put image down here. So variable character for image because we are storing the path of an image. So we'll put 500 characters there as the limit. The date will have date time. Where is the time? Right there. So we can store the date and the time and uh, password is variable character. Let's put this at 255 uh, just to make sure that whatever hashing algorithm we use will fit email variable character. Let's put 100 because some emails are quite long. Uh, the length here will put itself because it knows int has a limit of 10. So we can leave it be. And that's about it. Let me see what else we're, oh, we forgot row. So we need to know what role this user is playing. So variable character here, let's put 20. I think we can uh, creatively create rows within 20 characters. After all, they're going to just be three rows, really. Supervisor, cashier, or oh, maybe you can have four or five. That's up to you. Uh, yes, I think we have everything we need. So with this in mind, uh, date time doesn't need a limit as well because it knows what date time is. So what I would do now is scroll down and hit save. Okay, so it's saving and there we go. So we have a users table, but we need to add some indexes because we want to make searching easier. Now the thing is an index helps you to search. Let's say for example, if you're going to be running queries that will be searching for emails. For example, when somebody's logging in, you want to check if their email exists, which means you will be searching for emails. So you want to put an index there to make the search easier. The only problem is an index makes the database bigger. So you have to keep that in mind. Make sure you don't put uh, indexes on variable character um, fields that are very long. So just keep it to a minimum, as minimum as possible. We just want to know if an email exists. We won't need to know if a password exists. We'll check the password after. Here we have a username. We may want to search by username, but uh, not really, no. Uh, what else? Mm. Image, date. Then maybe you may want to search when a user was created. 
but we would definitely need to search by row so let's put that below there okay very good so an index makes the database bigger but it makes it easier to read now because most of the time on your website you are, you are doing a read operation and not a write operation so this is why indexes are okay because when you're reading when you are loading your page let's say just open a home page that's reading you navigate to another page that's reading it's rare that you do update it makes updating um, I think it makes it uh, a little bit slower especially if you delete a lot of rows once you delete because the indexes are no longer in order uh, it makes it more difficult to do things so but at the end of the day since we are doing more reading from the database indexes are good a good idea so put as little indexes as you need 